Cookie got attacked last night. She's in kind of bad, rough shape. She lost a bunch of feathers. And look what I just found. Of course, now she's she's pecking at it. So I was looking at the um, where she lays her eggs, and they're all gone. Eggs. I don't know what kind of animal can eat five eggs and then carry one off. Yeah, Cookie. I'm I'm actually very emotional right now. Last night we heard her. We heard her, and I mean, I got up immediately. The dog let him outside, and we rushed outside, and um, she was gone. I couldn't, I, I didn't know where she was, and the dog ran out over here, and um, I followed him. Of course, it's pitch black, and this is all I find as I'm going out here, is feathers. And then I saw this big clump of feathers. I thought that was her. I thought she was dead. So I don't know if she just ran for it to hide. But he was out here. I could see um, reflections of eyes out here in this field looking back at me, whatever it was. I mean, this was just within like 10 seconds. There's, there's feathers. And I followed him out here, and and Cookie was out here laying in the field. She was quite a ways out I'm here. I'm guessing it was a it was a coyote. I don't know what kind of animal can eat five eggs? I think this is where she was, but she was just scared and Fear. hiding, and um, you know. She was basically laying flat on the ground. I don't know whatever it was. I don't know if it caused damage to her or not. But I let um, Bo sleep outside. He slept outside last night. Um, this was about, I don't know, around two in the morning, I think. But I just let him stay outside. So he needs a break now. Because he's been outside all night. He's such a good boy. And I just think, you know, I can't be, I can't be out here all the time. I mean, we we were out here within a split second. We were out here. She's still being very bossy. So I don't know. Hopefully, she pecked. She pecked him. Really hard. I'm afraid they're going to be back. You know, the hard part's going to be getting her to be to go into the cage at night. But um, I could probably do it. I put three of the eggs, those dirty eggs from Easter. I put them back. Oh, she seems to be settling in a little bit. She spends a lot more time here. It's the end of April. 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. I think it's, I'm just going to spend the day out here um, with the animals. I had to pick her up because she was just laying. She was like laying like flat on the ground because she didn't want anything to get her, whatever it was. And I just picked her up and I put her on her perch where she slept. You know, it, it bothers me. You know, this is the thing when you live kind of on the edge of civilization. There's nobody out here helping you. And like if I had a gun, even whatever it was, I wouldn't have been able to shoot it. What am I going to do? Just I'm going to be out here like a crazy person shooting at things in the middle of the night. You know, that's that's not the kind of neighbor that I want to be. Is some crazy person shooting things. You know, it's crazy enough to be shooting things in the middle of the day with people around. And people do it. <laughs> so I'm sure that would make me really even more popular. I'm going to spend some time out here raking. I'm going to try to get the mower to work. I'm really, I'm kind of, I'm kind of angry. 
lot of it just seems like, you know, since the fire, it just seems like, um, when you're forgotten about, you know, but it's like, well, you guys burned down my house. People will give you little things, you know, a little, like a check, you know, for a hundred dollars or they'll give you clothes or they'll give you or food. But it's like, I want a, I want a house. I want my house back. You guys can't just go burning down houses. I mean, you don't want to call it terrorism. But I don't have a choice when it comes to my phone or my electricity. Like, I mean, I have to go with those companies. So those companies have, have a monopoly on those power lines. Speaking, how, how few fires are, are set in the history of ever, and who's been setting the most of these fires, it's just, it's almost statistically improbable that that many fires are being set. I mean, by one group. I'm sorry, but it's terrorism. And they're not being held responsible. It's criminal. The people that work for that company know the rules. They don't know this area. Sometimes the evidence is right in front of you. They don't want you to see it. You know? I want to explain why I get so emotional with this chicken. About a year before the fire, I had six chickens. How they all had names. I don't remember specifically all their names, but like one was named Floppy because she would just flop on the ground. They they were the healthiest eaters. They were just great chickens. They were laying lots like, of dozen um, eggs every day. I didn't know what to do with these eggs. I was giving them away to family, to friends, to neighbors, to anybody who wanted, you know, anybody who needed eggs. Eating, they were the healthiest eaters. Not like this one here. Um, I mean, one summer, um, something just started killing them. It was like I would I mean, come would... out and I would find two dead um, chickens. And um, it was like inside too, so I don't know. I don't know what I couldn't figure out who was what was doing it. Um, but they were so docile and um, innocent, you know. These were they, these were just all like six chickens that had grown up together from chicks, and they didn't know what a wild animal was. Uh, my dog was not my my dog at that time was very um, gentle, so he never really. He never um, agitated them or anything. They didn't know what violence was. So I'm sure they just didn't even fight back. You know, they didn't know what to do because they'd never seen anything like that. But they all lived together in this little chicken coop I had. Um, it was about, you know, a meter cube. Um, it had a light in there. It had a little hatch place where they could lay their eggs that was kind of off to the side. And it was all safe in there, but something was doing this, and it wasn't like last night. It wasn't like some animal was just coming in the middle of the night and killing them. This was like in broad daylight. Um, something was killing them. And I would find their bodies, and it was like, I don't know if the heart was ripped out. I know it just sounds so cliche, but it was like whatever was killing them would just kill them. It wasn't like they were killing them for food or anything. It was like they were just killing them for sport, which... Which makes me very suspicious because a wild animal would not do that, would they? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they would, but it just seems so. Um, it just doesn't seem like the kind of thing that an animal would do. Um, now, I, I kind of suspect I know what animal it was, and I'll tell you what it was later. But it, um, it just was one of those things where it was like a mystery. I would wake up and I would find a dead bird and there were two first there was just two dead so there were four left 
and the animals, they, the chickens started getting kind of agitated because they were Probably out here sleeping in the January, but it was a, it was a mild winter and they would sleep out in this tree. And then there was like another two. Um, and it was kind of the same thing, but it was more out somewhere else. I don't think it was inside there because they were kind of agitated at that point and they were sort of hiding. Okay. Well, by that time, there was only two left. By that, by the by the fifth one, I still didn't know what it was. Well, the sixth one, I, I heard something, and I ran outside, and something, it was like a some kind of hawk. That's why I'm saying it was it was probably this hawk. And probably just the same one. I don't know if it's someone's pet. You know, it just seems too, it's too unlikely. But this, why, I mean, he's not doing it for food, right? Are they just eating the heart? I mean, it's like, what kind of animal just eats the heart? Anything. He was just leaving it. Um, so I went outside and saw this hawk swoop down. It was so fast, I couldn't even see this, this bird, this hawk, whatever it was. It happened all over the course of just a few weeks. And by the time it was over, I was just like, I don't think I'm going to have chickens again. So now I got to worry about hawks and coyotes. The thing is, you know, do you really want to have your chickens cooped up all the time? It's just dredging up all this stuff. Because it's sort of a helplessness, you know, and she's, she has sort of sentimental reasons for me. Because before my mom passed away. There's some crows flying around today. I swear to God. All right. So my SIM card filled up and I had to go inside and delete a bunch of files from like last year and the year before. Some of the stuff I'm, I'm glad is gone. But um, some of it I don't I don't even know. I mean, hopefully, I've uploaded it, the stuff that's that I want to keep. So I'm wondering what people do. Do you just back up everything, um, or do you keep like a copy of on um, like it makes plate. sense to me to back up stuff that I'm probably never gonna have time to to watch again. Um, there's just so so much so much of it. So, um, at least I have one place where I know where it is. I just wonder what people do. A terabyte doesn't go very far nowadays. So, um, I just wanted to finish my story. And basically, I was telling you about this bird, you know, that was kind of sentimental to me. Um, this, this chicken here, the one I have, that's the one that almost died last night. I was, I thought she was dead. When I saw that pile of feathers, I thought that was her body like her lifeless body. And then when I went out in the field and um, we found her, you know, just like laying prone on the ground, not moving, I I was scared until I could see her breathing. And then I just thought, what, what if, you know, why is she, why is she out there? Like, how did she get that out there that far? Did she run? Um, was she dragged? What, what, what exactly happened? I, and I, I don't know. She doesn't look um, injured. I can't find anything, you know, there's no wounds on her, but she lost a bunch of feathers. So there must have been a struggle, you know, or something. I, I don't know whether they grabbed her by her tail and then, you know, the feathers pulled out or what. But she sent a mail to me because she was a baby when my, you know, the last time I saw my mom, the last few times I saw my mom. And um, I joked to my mom, I told my mom she was an American Eagle because when she was, you know, um, three weeks old, you couldn't tell what she was. But she was basically, you know, kind of bald. She looked like a bald eagle. I think my mom believed me. But you know, there's that attachment, that sentimental attachment to me, and just the and just the fact that I, you know, I've seen these birds, I've seen what happens to these birds, and then just seeing these crows fly over. There's just some weird, you know. There's just some. I've lived here 
20 years and I've seen some weird stuff. Just things that are weird. But there's things out here that are just nerve wracking because you're alone and nobody cares. I mean, it's not like I can, who am I gonna call? Oh yeah, my chicken almost got attacked last night. You know, nobody's gonna, nobody cares. Anyway, I'm going on and on and on. Um, I just wanted to, I'm just sitting out here drinking my tea because I finished my breakfast and I brought it inside and had to clear my SIM card. And I just wanted to finish this up. But you know, the poor dog has been up all night. Well, maybe he hasn't been up. But you know, he stayed outside last night with the chicken to watch her. And that's not right, you know. He, he needs to sleep. Um, I need to sleep. This isn't, this isn't right. You know, having these animals just roaming around here and nobody seems to do anything, you know. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure that if I had a cow or a goat, nobody cares about my chicken. But if I had a cow or a goat, you know, I, it's just weird to me. It's like there seems like there's a discrepancy in what's important and what's not important. Like, you know, and I mean, I wouldn't have been able to shoot that animal anyway because it was just moving too quickly you know and i'm not going to shoot in the middle of the night with a dog and everything with a chicken out here you know that's silly that's crazy but i don't know what to do you know put out a trap there's just too many of these little critters i don't know what to do i'm sorry I think I'm just overwhelmed. I don't even know why I'm sad. I don't think this has anything to do with the chicken. But the dog needs to sleep. And I've got a bunch of things I need to do today. I gotta do my laundry. I would like to get started on this mower. I, you know, I'm never gonna get a house. So there's no point in me staying here. Um, it's overwhelming. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to close this like on a sad note, but it's but it's because I'm not really sad. I'm just sad about my circumstance. Um, it's a beautiful day. Um, you know, winter's over. Winter is are always kind of stressful. Summers are always kind of stressful too. But you know, spring and fall. It seems like we don't get our we don't get enough spring and fall days where the where the weather's just perfect like this. Um, so I want to enjoy it. I really do. But um, I'm I I just I don't even want to deal with this. Sh I don't want to deal with this shit anymore. It's just I, I want to start a new chapter of my life, and I've I've been this is, I've been telling myself this for almost ten years now, and I just can't figure out, you know, I'm, I've been waiting for a sign from God, you know, like oh okay that's what I need to do, and it just isn't it's just I haven't I haven't it hasn't happened, um, you know I mean maybe it's I'm just, I'm hesitating because I, because it's such a um, major decision, you know, it's life changing. Um, my health is not good, but if I move someplace closer to doctors and stuff, I won't have to think about that, you know. I Maybe I don't have to have a car or I can just have like, um, you know, an electric bike or something or something where... You know, I can, or the dog can ride in a basket or something. I don't know. Um, but I'm just tired of this, you know. It just seems like every year I feel more and more isolated. And, I, and the harder I try, it just seems like whenever we get together, it doesn't seem, it's not a positive experience anymore. Now that my mom is gone. People don't understand when you get old, <laughs> things things change, you know. You're more concentrated on just your basic needs than you are on, 
you know, being the perfect host or, um, you know, they just, my mom, even my mom, she used to cook these really elaborate meals and, you know, we would help. But as we got older, you know, she just, you just, you just don't do things as much. The, the little bit of time that I got to spend with her would be, you know, just talking to her. And, um, it, and making meals and things. Because we, I, our family is so spread out now, um, which I don't like that either. I mean, I wish that my family was all... We all live in the same house. <laughs> because getting together is impossible. It's just so much work. And as I get older, I just don't have the energy to drive, you know, three or six hours or more and then, and then back. And just to spend a few hours together. Um... And, you know, there's just, there's just, I think everybody's kind of feeling that heaviness, you know, losing my mom. I think, I just don't think we want to, we, I think we just need some time that we don't have. I'm so sad, I'm crying. I'm going to try to make it, add some stuff so this video isn't so down. It's such a downer. I hope you understand.